Let us continue the discussion about the pressure. Okay? So here, the fact that the pressure remains constant in the horizontal plane can be deduced by Pascal's law. It states that the pressure applied to a confined fluid increases throughout by the same amount. Okay? That means if a piston cylinder defines containing water has pressure shown in this figure, let me draw that out. Okay, suppose you have a tank of water. Here is a 100 kilopascal, for example. And uh, at some depth, it will be 105 kilopascal. Okay, after you add five units of pressure, five units, for example, here is five kilopascal. We add five kilopascal to this 105 kilopascal. Not only, okay, not only, not only at this point it will become 110 kilopascal, but at this point, okay, at the surface of this water, it will also have an increase of pressure. That would be the concept of Pascal's law, okay? So there would be an example that is the usage of Pascal's law in designing the hydraulic machine. Hydraulic machine actually operates by using Pascal's law, okay? So this hydraulic lift is actually an example for, okay? Well, the figure on the right shows a hydraulic machine. It consists of two hydraulic cylinders, one and two, with their pistons at the same level, each having a cross-sectional area A1. Here, that's a cross-sectional area A1, as well as cross-sectional area A2, respectively. A high-pressure fluid is used in this device, okay? Suppose a force F1 is exerted on the cylinder one and the force F2 is given out as cylinder two, then we can use Pascal's law to determine the ratio. Okay, let me write that down the ratio. That should be our target. Our target is to find out what is F2 divided by F1. Okay, that's our target. So how can we proceed? Okay, we would like to express this by using cross-sectional areas A1 and A2. Okay, we would like to derive the F2 divided by F1 by using Pascal's law, okay? Well, here, because we are using a high-pressure fluid so that when you are compressing this piston, it actually moves just very little to move this up, okay? So you can assume that they are at the same elevation, okay? So that because of this, we can use Pascal's law to write that down, that is P1 equal to P2, okay? That is Pascal's law, okay? And then because we know that for pressure, it will be the force per unit area, okay? Because it's acting on the surface, because it's acting on the surface of, the, of this fluid, okay? Equal to F2 divided by A2, okay? So it's very easy for us to find out this one. That is uh, F2 divided by F1 equal to uh, A2 divided by A1, okay? And here we can find out actually F2 it is the force output while the F1 is the force input and then we can find out this ratio this ratio we have a name for that that would be ideal mechanical advantage okay this is called ideal mechanical advantage okay which is the ratio between the force output to the force input but why I have the word ideal here is because I have neglected so many factors that may affect this ratio. For example, the friction of the piston as well as the weight of the piston, okay? Those are the things that I have neglected, okay? Of course, there are more factors, okay? So that this is what we call the ideal mechanical advantage, okay? Okay, after this part about pressure, we will go to the next section.